Hello, this is David Flynn from PracticeLoveMedia.com. Today I'm going to read Chapter 2 of The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And I have to say I really very much enjoyed reading Chapter 1. And as I go through this, it's, it's great for me to revisit it in such detail reading it to you. Uh, several years ago, I started putting this to use, and it has really made wonderful changes and improvements in my life, and that's the type of book that I would like to read to uh, our Practice Love Media folk out there. So anyway, I'm going to continue now. Chapter 2, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And please click on our YouTube site. It's Practice Love Media on YouTube. And come and visit us here again at practicelovemedia.com. We're going to have some things cooking very, very soon. Thank you. Chapter 2. How Your Own Mind Works You have a mind, and you should learn how to use it. There are two levels of your mind, the conscious or rational level and the subconscious or irrational level. You think with your conscious mind, and whatever you habitually think sinks down into your subconscious mind which creates according to the nature of your thoughts. Your subconscious mind is the seat of your emotions and is the creative mind. If you think good, good will follow. If you think evil, evil will follow. This is the way your mind works. The main point to remember is once the subconscious mind accepts an idea, it begins to execute it. It is an interesting and subtle truth that the law of the subconscious mind works for the good and bad ideas alike. This law, when applied in a negative way, is the cause of failure, frustration, and unhappiness. However, when your habitual thinking is harmonious and constructive, you experience perfect health, success, and prosperity. Peace of mind and a healthy body are inevitable when you begin to think and feel in the right way. Whatever you claim mentally and feel as true, your subconscious mind will accept and bring forth into your experience. The only thing necessary for you to do is to get your subconscious mind to accept your idea and the law of your own subconscious mind will bring forth the health, peace, and position you desire. You give them a command or decree and your subconscious mind will faithfully reproduce the idea impressed upon it. The law of your mind is this. You will get a reaction or response from your subconscious mind according to the nature of the thought or idea you hold in your conscious mind. Psychologists and psychiatrists point out that when thoughts are conveyed to your subconscious mind, impressions are made in the brain cells. As soon as your subconscious accepts any idea, it proceeds to put it into effect immediately. It works by association of ideas and uses every bit of knowledge that you have gathered in your lifetime to bring about its purpose. It draws on the infinite power, energy, and wisdom within you. It lines up all the laws of nature to get its way. Sometimes it brings to about an immediate solution to your difficulties, but at other times it may take days, weeks, or longer. Its ways are past finding out. 
conscious and subconscious terms differentiated. You must remember that these are not two minds. They are merely two spheres of activity within one mind. Your conscious mind is the reasoning mind. It is that phase of mind which chooses. For example, you choose your books, your home, and your partner in life. You make all your decisions with your conscious mind. On the other hand, without any conscious choice on your part, your heart is kept functioning automatically, and the process of digestion, circulation, and breathing are carried on by your subconscious mind through the processes independent of your conscious control. Your subconscious mind accepts what is impressed upon it or what you consciously believe. It does not reason things out like your conscious mind. And it does not argue with you controversially. Your subconscious mind is like the soil which accepts any kind of seed, good or bad. Your thoughts are active and might be likened unto seeds. Negative, destructive thoughts continue to work negatively in your subconscious mind and in due time will come forth into outer experience which corresponds with them. Remember, your subconscious mind does not engage in proving whether your thoughts are good or bad, true or false, but it responds according to the nature of your thoughts or suggestions. For example, if you consciously assume something as true, even though it may be false, your subconscious mind will accept it as true and proceed to bring about results which must necessarily follow because you consciously assumed it to be true. Experiments by Psychologists Innumerable experiments by psychologists and others on persons in the hypnotic state have shown that the subconscious mind is incapable of making selections and comparisons which are necessary for a reasoning process. They have shown repeatedly that your subconscious mind will accept any suggestions, however false. Having once accepted any suggestion, it responds according to the nature of the suggestion given. To illustrate the amenability of your subconscious mind to suggestion, if a practiced hypnotist suggests to one of his subjects that he is Napoleon Bonaparte, or even a cat or a dog, he will act out the part with inimitable accuracy. His personality becomes changed for the time being. He believes himself to be whatever the operator tells him he is. A skilled hypnotist may suggest to one of his students in the hypnotic state that his back itches, to another that his nose is bleeding, to another that he is a marble statue, to another that he is freezing and that the temperature is below zero. Each one will follow out the line of his particular suggestion, totally oblivious to all his surroundings which do not pertain to his idea. These simple illustrations portray clearly the difference between your conscious, reasoning mind and your subconscious mind, which is impersonal, non-selective, and accepts as true whatever your conscious mind believes to be true. Hence the importance of selecting thoughts, ideas, and premises which bless, heal, inspire, and fill your soul with joy. The terms objective and subjective mind clarified. 
Your conscious mind is sometimes referred to as your objective mind because it deals with outward objects. The objective mind takes cognizance to the objective world. Its media of observation are your five physical senses. Your objective mind is your guide and director in your contact with your environment. You gain knowledge through your five senses. Your objective mind learns through observation, experience, and education. As previously pointed out, the greatest function of the objective mind is that of reasoning. Suppose you are one of the thousands of tourists who come to Los Angeles annually. You would come to the conclusion that it is a beautiful city based on your observation of the parks, pretty gardens, majestic buildings, and lovely homes. This is the working of your objective mind. Your subconscious mind is often referred to as your subjective mind. Your subjective mind takes cognizance of its environment by means independent of the five senses. Your subjective mind perceives by intuition. It is the seat of your emotion and the storehouse of memory. Your subjective mind performs its highest functions when your objective senses are in abeyance. In a word, it is that intelligence which makes itself manifest when the objective mind is suspended or in a sleepy, drowsy state. Your subjective mind sees without the use of the natural organs of vision. It has the capacity of clairvoyance and clairaudience. Your subjective mind can leave your body, travel to distant lands, and bring back information, oftentimes of the most exact and truthful character. Through your subjective mind, you can read the thoughts of others, read the contents of sealed envelopes and closed safes. Your subjective mind has the ability to apprehend the thoughts of others without the use of ordinary objective means of communication. It is of the greatest importance that we understand the interaction of the objective and the subjective mind in order to learn the true art of prayer. The subconscious cannot reason like your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind cannot argue controversially. Hence, if you give it wrong suggestions, it will accept them as true and will proceed to bring them to pass as conditions experiences, and events. All things that have happened to you are based on the thoughts impressed on your subconscious mind through belief. If you conveyed erroneous concepts to your subconscious mind, the sure method of overcoming them is by the repetition of constructive, harmonious thoughts frequently repeated which your subconscious mind accepts, thus forming new and healthy habits of thought and life. For your subconscious mind is the seat of habit. The habitual thinking of your conscious mind establishes deep grooves in your subconscious mind. This is very favorable for you if your habitual thoughts are harmonious, peaceful, and constructive. If you have indulged in fear, worry, and other obstructive forms of thinking, the remedy is to recognize the omnipotence of your subconscious mind and decree freedom, happiness, and perfect health. Your subconscious mind, being creative, and one with your divine source, will proceed to create the freedom and happiness which you have earnestly decreed. 
The Tremendous Power of Suggestion You must realize by now that your conscious mind is the watchman at the gate and its chief function is to protect your subconscious mind from false impression. You are now aware of one of the basic laws of mind. Your subconscious mind is amenable to suggestion. As you know, your subconscious mind does not make comparisons or contrasts. Neither does it reason and think things out for itself. This latter function belongs to your conscious mind. It simply reacts to the impressions given to it by your conscious mind. It does not show a preference for one course of action over another. The following is a classic example of the tremendous power of suggestion. Suppose you approach a timid looking passenger on board a ship and say to him something like this. You look very ill. How pale you are. I feel certain you are going to be seasick. Let me help you to your cabin. The passenger turns pale. Your suggestion of seasickness associates itself with his own fears and forebodings. He accepts your aid down to the berth. And there, your negative suggestion, which was accepted by him, is realized different reactions to the same suggestion. It is true that different people will react in different ways to the same suggestion because of their subconscious conditioning or belief. For example, if you go to a sailor on a ship and say to him sympathetically, my dear fellow, you're looking very ill. Aren't you feeling sick? You look to me as if you are going to be seasick. According to his temperament, he either laughs at your joke or expresses a mild irritation. Your suggestion fell on deaf ears in this instance because your suggestion of seasickness was associated in his mind with his own immunity from it. Therefore, it called up not fear or worry, but self-confidence. The dictionary says that a suggestion is the act or instance of putting something into one's mind, the mental process by which the thought or idea suggested is entertained and accepted or put into effect. You must remember that a suggestion cannot impose something on the subconscious mind against the will of the conscious mind. In other words, your conscious mind has the power to reject the suggestion given. In the case of the sailor, he had no fear of seasickness. He had convinced himself of his immunity and the negative suggestion had absolutely no power to evoke fear. The suggestion of seasickness to the other passenger called forth his indwelling fear of seasickness. Each of us has his own inner fears, beliefs, opinions, and these inner assumptions rule and govern our lives. A suggestion has no power in and of itself, except it is accepted mentally by you. This causes your subconscious powers to flow in a limited and restricted way according to the nature of the suggestion. How he lost his arm. Every two or three years, I give a series of lectures at the London Truth Forum in Caxton Hall. This is a forum I founded a number of years ago. Dr. Evelyn Fleet, the director, told me about an article which appeared in the English newspapers dealing with the power of suggestion. This is the suggestion a man gave to his subconscious mind over a period of about two years. Quote, I would give my right arm to see my daughter cured. Unquote. It appeared that his daughter had a crippling form of arthritis 
together with a so-called incurable form of skin disease. Medical treatment had failed to alleviate the condition, and the father had an intense longing for his daughter's healing and expressed his desire in the words just quoted. Dr. Evelyn Fleet said that the newspaper article pointed out that one day the family was out riding when their car collided with another. The father's right arm was torn off at the shoulder, and immediately the daughter's arthritis and skin condition vanished. You must make certain to give your subconscious only suggestions which heal, bless, elevate, and inspire you in all your ways. Remember that your subconscious mind cannot take a joke. It takes you at your word. How Auto-Suggestion Banishes Fear Illustrations of Auto-Suggestion Auto-Suggestion means suggesting something definite and specific to oneself. Herbert Parkin, in his excellent manual of auto-suggestion, records the following incident. It has an amusing side so that one remembers it. Quote, a New York visitor in Chicago looks at his watch, which is set an hour ahead of Chicago time, and tells a Chicago friend that it is 12 o'clock. The Chicago friend not considering the difference in time between Chicago and New York, tells the New Yorker that he is hungry and that he must go to lunch. Auto-suggestion may be used to banish various fears and other negative conditions. A young singer was invited to give an audition. She had been looking forward to the interview, but on three previous occasions she had failed miserably due to her fear of failure. This young lady had a very good voice, but she had been saying to herself, quote, when the time comes for me to sing, maybe they won't like me. I will try, but I'm full of fear and anxiety, unquote. Her subconscious mind accepted these negative auto-suggestions as a request and proceeded to manifest them and bring them into her experience. The cause was an involuntary auto-suggestion, i.e. silent fear thoughts, emotionalized and subjectified. She overcame it by the following technique. Three times a day she isolated herself in a room. She sat down comfortably in an armchair relaxed her body and closed her eyes. She stilled her mind and body as best she could. Physical inertia favors mental passivity and renders the mind more receptive to suggestion. She counteracted the fear suggestion by saying to herself, I sing beautifully. I am poised, serene, confident, and calm. She repeated this statement slowly, quietly, and with feeling from five to ten times at each sitting. She had three such sittings every day, and one immediately prior to sleep. At the end of a week, she was completely poised and confident. When the invitation to audition came, she gave a remarkable, wonderful audition. How she restored her memory. A woman, age 75, was in the habit of saying to herself, quote, I am losing my memory, unquote. She reversed the procedure and practiced induced auto-suggestion several times a day as follows. My memory from today on is improving in every department. I shall always remember whatever I need to know at every moment of time and point of space. The impressions received will be clearer and more definite. I shall retain them automatically and with ease. 
Whatever I wish to recall will immediately present itself in the correct form in my mind. I am improving rapidly every day, and very soon my memory will be better than it ever has been before. At the end of three weeks, her memory was back to normal, and she was delighted. How he overcame a nasty temper. Many men who complained of irritability and bad temper proved to be very susceptible to auto-suggestion and obtained marvelous results by using the following statements three or four times a day, morning, noon, and at night prior to sleep for about a month. Quote, Henceforth, I shall grow more good-humored. Joy, happiness, and cheerfulness are now becoming my normal states of mind. Every day, I am becoming more and more lovable and understanding. I am now becoming the center of cheer and goodwill to all those about me, infecting them with good humor. This happy, joyous, and cheerful mood is now becoming my normal, natural state of mind. I am grateful." Unquote. The Constructive and destructive power of suggestion. Some illustrations and comments on heterosuggestion. Heterosuggestion means suggestions from another person. In all ages, the power of suggestion has played a part in the life and thought of man in every period of time and in each country of the earth. In many parts of the world, it is the controlling power in religion. Suggestion may be used to discipline and control ourselves, but it can also be used to take control and command over others who do not know the laws of mind. In its constructive form, it is wonderful and magnificent. In its negative aspects, it is one of the most destructive of all the response patterns of the mind, resulting in patterns of misery, failure, suffering, sickness, and disaster. Have you accepted any of these? From infancy on, the majority of us have been given many negative suggestions. Not knowing how to thwart them, we unconsciously accepted them. Here are some of the negative suggestions. You can't. You'll never amount to anything. You mustn't. You'll fail. You haven't got a chance. You're all wrong. It's no use. It's not what you know, but who you know. The world is going to the dogs. What's the use? Nobody cares. It's no use trying so hard. You're too old now. Things are getting worse and worse. Life is an endless grind. Love is for the birds. You just can't win. Pretty soon you'll be bankrupt. Watch out, you'll get the virus. You can't trust a soul, etc., etc., etc. Unless, as an adult, you use constructive auto-suggestion, which is a reconditioning therapy, the impressions made on you in the past can cause behavior patterns that cause failure in your personal and social life. Auto-suggestion is a means of releasing you from the mass of negative verbal conditioning that might otherwise distort your life pattern, making the development of good habits difficult. You can counteract negative suggestions. Pick up the paper any day and you can read dozens of items that could sow the seeds of futility fear, worry, anxiety, 
an impending doom. If accepted by you, these thoughts of fear could cause you to lose the will for life. Knowing that you can reject all these negative suggestions by giving your subconscious mind constructive auto-suggestions, you can counteract all these destructive ideas. Check regularly on the negative suggestions that people make to you. You do not have to be influenced by destructive heterosuggestion. All of us have suffered from it in our childhood and in our teens. If you look back, you can easily recall how parents, friends, relatives, teachers, and associates contributed in a campaign of negative suggestions. Study the things said to you, and you will discover much of it was in the form of propaganda. The purpose of much of what was said was to control you or instill fear into you. This heterosuggestion process goes on in every home, office, factory, and club. You will find that many of these suggestions are for the purposes of making you feel and act as others want you to and in ways that are to their advantage. How Suggestion Killed a Man Here is an illustration of heterosuggestion. A relative of mine went to a crystal gazer in India who told him that he had a bad heart and predicted that he would die at the next new moon. He began to tell all the members of his family about his prediction and he arranged his will. This powerful suggestion entered into his subconscious mind because he accepted it completely. My relative also told me that this crystal gazer was believed to have some strange occult powers and he could do no harm or good to a person. He died as predicted, not knowing that he was the cause of his own death. I suppose many of us have heard similar stupid, ridiculous, superstitious stories. Let us look at what happened in the light of our knowledge of the way the subconscious minds work. Whatever the conscious, reasoning mind of man believes, the subconscious mind will accept and act upon. My relative was happy, healthy, vigorous, and robust when he went off to see the fortune teller. She gave him a very negative suggestion, which he accepted. He became terrified and constantly dwelt upon the fact that he was going to die at the next new moon. He proceeded to tell everybody about it, and he prepared for the end. The activity took place in his own mind, and his own thought was the cause. He brought about his own so-called death, or rather destruction of the physical body, by his fear and expectation of the end. The woman who predicted his death had no more power than the stones and sticks in the field. Her suggestion had no power to create or bring about the end she suggested. If he had known the laws of his mind, he would have completely rejected the negative suggestion and refused to give her words any attention, knowing in his heart that he was governed and controlled by his own thought and feeling. Like tin arrows aimed at a battleship, her prophecy could have been completely neutralized and dissipated without hurting him. The suggestion of others in themselves have absolutely no power whatever over you except the power that you give them through your own thoughts. You have to give your mental consent. You have to entertain the thought. Then it becomes your thought and you do the thinking. Remember, 
you have the capacity to choose. Choose life. Choose love. Choose health. The power of an assumed major premise. Your mind works like a syllogism. This means that whatever your major premise, your conscious mind assumes to be true, determines the conclusion your subconscious mind comes to in regard to any particular question or problem in your mind. If your premise is true, the conclusion must be true, as in the following example. Every virtue is laudable. Kindness is a virtue. Therefore, kindness is laudable. Another example follows. All formed things change and pass away. The pyramids of Egypt are formed things. Therefore, someday, the pyramids of Egypt will pass away. The first statement is referred to as the major premise, and the right conclusion must necessarily follow the right premise. A college professor who attended some of my Science of Mind lectures in May 1962 at Town Hall, New York, said to me, quote, Everything in my life is topsy-turvy, and I have lost health, wealth, and friends. Everything I touch turns out wrong, unquote. I explained to him that he should establish a major premise in his thinking, that the infinite intelligence of his subconscious mind was guiding, directing, and prospering him, spiritually, mentally, and materially. Then, his subconscious mind would automatically direct him wisely in his investments, decisions, and also heal his body and restore his mind to peace and tranquility. This professor formulated an overall picture of the way he wanted his life to be, and this was his major premise. Quote, Infinite intelligence leads and guides me in all my ways. Perfect health is mine, and the law of harmony operates in my mind and body. Beauty, love, peace, and abundance are mine. The principle of right action and divine order govern my entire life. I know my major premise is based on eternal truths of life, and I know, feel, and believe that my subconscious mind responds according to the nature of my conscious thinking. He wrote me as follows, quote, I repeated the above statement slowly, quietly, and lovingly several times a day, knowing that they were sinking down into my subconscious mind and that results must follow. I am deeply grateful for the interview you gave me, and I would like to add that all departments of my life are changing for the better. It works." Unquote. The subconscious does not argue controversially. Your subconscious mind is all-wise and knows the answers to all questions. It does not argue with you or talk back to you. It does not say, you must not impress me with that. For example, when you say, I can't do this, I'm too old now, I can't meet this obligation, 
I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. I don't know the right politician. You are impregnating your subconscious with all of these negative thoughts, and it responds accordingly. You are actually blocking your own good, thereby bringing lack, limitation, and frustration into your life. When you set up obstacles, impediments, and delays in your conscious mind, you are denying the wisdom and intelligence resident in your subconscious mind. You are actually saying in effect that your subconscious mind cannot solve your problem. This leads to mental and emotional congestion, followed by sickness and neurotic tendencies. To realize your desire and overcome your frustration, affirm boldly several times a day, the infinite intelligence which gave me this desire leads, guides, and reveals to me the perfect plan for the unfolding of my desire. I know the deeper wisdom of my subconscious is now responding, and what I feel and claim within is expressed in the without. There is balance, equilibrium, and equanimity. If you say, there is no way out, I am lost, there's no way out of this dilemma, I'm stymied and blocked, you'll get no answer or response from your subconscious mind. If you want the subconscious to work for you, give it the right request and attain its cooperation. It is always working for you. It is controlling your heartbeat this minute and also your breathing. It heals a cut on your finger and its tendency is lifeward, forever seeking to take care of you and preserve you. Your subconscious has a mind of its own, but it accepts your patterns of thought and imagery. When you are seeking an answer to a problem, your subconscious mind will respond, but it expects you to come to a decision and to a true judgment in your conscious mind. You must acknowledge the answer is in your subconscious mind. However, if you say, I don't think there's any way out, I'm all mixed up and confused, why don't I get an answer? you are neutralizing your prayer. Like the soldier marking time, you do not get anywhere. Still the wheels of your mind. Relax, let go and quietly affirm. My subconscious knows the answer. It is responding to me now. I give thanks because I know the infinite intelligence of my subconscious knows all things and is revealing the perfect answer to me now. My real conviction is now setting free the majesty and glory of my subconscious mind. I rejoice that it is so. Review of highlights. Number one, think good and good follows. Think evil and evil follows. You are what you think all day long. Two, your subconscious mind does not argue with you. It accepts what your conscious mind decrees. If you say I can't afford it, it may be true. But do not say it. Select a better thought. Decree, I'll buy it. I accept it in my mind. 3. You have the power to choose. Choose health and happiness. You can choose to be friendly or you can choose to be unfriendly. Choose to be cooperative, joyous, friendly, lovable, 
and the whole world will respond. This is the best way to develop a wonderful personality. Your conscious mind is the watchman at the gate. Its chief function is to protect your subconscious mind from false impressions. Choose to believe that something good can happen and is happening now. Your greatest power is your capacity to choose. Choose happiness and abundance. 5. The suggestions and statements of others have no power to hurt you. The only power is the movement of your own thought. You can choose to reject the thoughts or statements of others and affirm the good. You have the power to choose how you will react. 6. Watch what you say. You have to account for every idle word. Never say, I will fail, I will lose my job, I can't pay the rent. Your subconscious cannot take a joke. It will bring all these things to pass. 7. Your mind is not evil. No force of nature is evil. It depends how you use the powers of nature. Use your mind to bless, heal, and inspire all people everywhere. 8. Never say I can't. Overcome that fear by submitting the following. I can do all things through the power of my own subconscious mind. 9. Begin to think from the standpoint of eternal truths and principles of life and not from the standpoint of fear, ignorance, and superstition. Do not let others do your thinking for you. Choose your own thoughts and make your own decisions. 10. You are the captain of your soul, your subconscious mind, and the master of your fate. Remember, you have the capacity to choose. Choose life. Choose love. Choose health. Choose happiness. 11. Whatever your conscious mind assumes and believes to be true, your subconscious mind will accept and bring to pass. Believe in good fortune, divine guidance, right actions, and all the blessings of life. This is David Flynn, and I'm going to tell you right now I enjoyed reading this chapter to you as well. And as, look o as I look over this, you know, part of the genesis, part of the genesis of Practice Love Media is the changes. I say is because it's ongoing, and it ongoes when I read this to you the changes that are taking place in my life and have been taking place in my life due to a total 180 degree switch in my attitude. I was at my wits end and I changed my mind. And when I changed my mind, I began working in the direction that has led to me reading you these audiobooks and to practice love media and to lots else that is going on in my life. So, if you enjoy this, I'm going to start work on chapter three right now. I invite you to our website, practicelovemedia.com, and we're going to be putting these up. This is not up on the YouTube channel yet, but of course, all of these are going to be placed onto our YouTube channel. And we invite you to subscribe, press the subscribe button there, and to visit us and give us your comments. This is David Flynn from PracticeLoveMedia.com. 
Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for Chapter 3 of The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Practice love.